So you guys sent me over a hundred Minecraft escape rooms ranging from tiny bedrock boxes to torture chambers to carefully crafted masterpieces in the hopes that I'd play them all and be impressed. And honestly, I am impressed at how bad they all are. Look how easy this is to escape. Who designed this? What even is this? You guys are cooking your escape rooms well done for the Gordon Ramsay of Minecraft prisons. Okay, but in all seriousness, playing your maps was a roller coaster from completely broken puzzles to learning insane glitches I never knew existed. But they were still far from perfect, so hopefully you all learned something from my debunk videos because today I'm debunking you. So I find myself trapped in a tiny bedrock box in the corner of a bedrock room. I couldn't reach any containers except this one hopper that only had four oak planks. Looking around, I also noticed a crafting table below me, but there was nothing behind it. So this is everything I have. I can't quite make a trap door or a boat, so I don't think there's anything I can craft that's useful. This is really not a lot to work with. I almost feel like giving up already. But then, I... I, you know what, fine, I'll just say the line. But then I had a very good idea. I used F5. See, using F5 gave me a whole new perspective and I was able to see outside of the escape room where I realized the walls were only one block thick and there was a room right next to me that didn't have a roof. But then I looked around the room I was in and I noticed a hopper I couldn't have seen before. I wonder where you got that idea from. Anyway, I realized that I might be able to open the hopper if I jumped and right clicked at just the right time and sure enough, it was possible. And inside the hopper was, oh, oh no. <laughs> <sighs> well, okay. Thanks for the ender pearl, I guess. And here's the sad part. I don't know how, but this was somehow the most common mistake I saw. Putting ender pearls in a room with one block thick walls. This map, for example, was called Speedrun Vault. And I beat it in 20 seconds. Like, seriously, do you guys realize how broken ender pearls are? At one point, I felt so bad for choosing so many prisons the exact same way that in one room I just gave in and used the ender pearl the intended way. And then just seconds later, it gave me a second ender pearl. You know what? At this point, you're just asking to be debunked. Forget this. Screw this. I'm skipping ahead till we find a different map. I don't care. Nope. No. No. Wait, what's this? What the? All right, I found a good one. So I'm trapped 100 feet underground on a small platform surrounded by void on all sides. And this room looked really strange. There seemed to be some kind of contraption with pistons, torches, observers, and carrots, I guess. That explains this rabbit stuck in a glass cage here. Now, of course, I found a hopper in F5, which had a powdered snow bucket, a stack of carrots, and three snowballs. It looked like the goal was to update that observer, but for that, I'd have to break those carrots from all the way over here. And to do that, I think I need to somehow break the torches. So I decided to start throwing my snowballs at the target piston contraption thing to start breaking them because no crops in Minecraft can survive in darkness. And that was a perfect plan until I realized I I can't even break the second torch. So I double checked F5 and noticed a cauldron with another powdered snow I didn't see. Now I'd love to just parkour to the other side using the powdered snow, but I don't have leather boots. And that's when I remembered the rabbit and suddenly it clicked. The achievement you get when you step on powdered snow is light as a rabbit, which implies that rabbits can step on powdered snow. Not only that, they can eat planted carrots. This whole time I was thinking I had to break the carrots, but I just have to update them. The goal is to get this rabbit to those carrots and powdered snow is the key. I'll use my carrots to attract the rabbit towards me as I keep moving the powdered snow until- Oh! Alright, let's try this again. Don't jump off this time. Okay, everything's fine. We're fine. Why? Finally, a rabbit with the will to live. Well, he made his way over to the carrots, and after staring in his face for 40 minutes, he ate them. Updating the observer, activating dispensers above me, which gave me two shulker boxes. The first one held a looting sword and four cobwebs, but the second one dispensed as a block. So I tried standing on the first shulker to see if I could jump and reach it, but I was just one block short. Luckily, I know how to make an extra block with just these items. Pretty simple. Cut up the cobwebs with the sword, get string, make wool. The second shulker had three leather and three rabbit hides. Now, if you remember from my hopper prison, all you need to infinitely nerd pull out of a pit like this is just two powdered snow and leather boots. So I can completely escape this room if I can just get four leather. All I'm missing is one rabbit hide. Uh, hey. Hey, but oh, I swear to f- Overall, it was a pretty fun escape room. Eight out of 10. Next, this next map was a lot more challenging. It's a giant statue of a shulker nearly filled with bedrock. And you start in a tiny room in the center with no openings and no items except for a single acacia plank. Now, I wouldn't blame you if you thought this was impossible. How do you get out of a fully sealed bedrock box with just one plank? Well, I don't know about you, but I have a very good idea. I used the F5 glitch to look for secrets behind the walls and it didn't take long for me to find the next room. The question was, how do I get there? And then I caught a glimpse of it. Redstone. Of course, I have to make a button. Oh, what else would you do with a plank of wood? Lo and behold, after trial and error, the redstone dispensed an ender pearl. It's all too easy. The best part is that pearl glitching through the wall is actually the intended solution this time. Now, the first thing I saw in room two was a wall of signs that said real bedrock, not clickbait. And uh, yeah, seems legit. There was also the side room with a target block across a pit of lava. It seemed like it would activate this dropper in the ceiling, but why power the dropper if I can't even reach the item it drops? The only other thing in this area is this exit three blocks up here, but there's nothing to access, so that's everything. And I was stuck in this room for six hours until I realized, oh wait, it's not actually bedrock. 
What I uncovered looked like some kind of Amsa school worshipping room. Why? And of course, the hopper in the middle of the room contains another hopper. You guys realize these jokes aren't gonna make any sense if people haven't seen my other videos. Well, I figured I'd collect all the candles, banners, and this chest, and also check under the altar just in case. What I found was interesting. One shulker spawn egg. Okay, first things first. I have enough blocks to get up to the exit. And the next room is an even higher exit. Uh, of course, we're probably thinking the same thing right now. If I spawn the shulker here, I could get up there with levitation, but there's one thing we're still missing. There still has to be something important in that dropper, right? But I'd have to be able to get through the window to actually reach it. Fortunately, I think I can. Shulkers have a solid hitbox, so if I spawn it right on my face, I'll get forced into crawl mode where I can just about open the dropper myself. Look, I know using the shulker here is risky, and this probably isn't even the intended solution, but I can't leave this area without at least checking the dropper first. What? It's just a piston. What was the point? Ah, that was such a waste of a shulker. I should have just used it for levitation the first time. Okay, this isn't hopeless yet. I don't have the shulker anymore, but I have candles, which conveniently don't break when you remove the block they're standing on. So if I keep placing and breaking the piston, I can create a staircase of candles. So I guess the piston wasn't completely useless. After going down the next corridor, I noticed another wall of signs that said real bedrock, not clickbait. Yeah, I'm not falling for that again. Behind the deep slate was a tall room with a floor of lava, three hoppers in the wall, and an exit at the top. Presumably I have to open each hopper to get to the end, and I can just about reach the first one. It's another shulker. Okay, yeah, I've learned my lesson. I'll just get levitation. I guess we'll fly to hopper number two. Uh, another shulker. Well, wait a minute. I don't have to summon this. I can still use the levitation from the first guy. Hopper three, you'll never guess what's inside. Again, though, the first shulker can still reach me, so I'm leaving this room with two shulkers to spare. Already at room number five, and we have a pillar of shulker boxes and a sign that says, if you're cool, you do it the correct way. So the sign is referring to the fact that if you were lazy, you could just mine the shulker boxes and nerd pull back up. But the second and cooler way is to parkour up the shulker boxes by opening them one at a time. You want to guess which way I picked? Option three. Room 6 is somehow weirder. There's a few things dotted around the room, but like, the exit's only two blocks up, so uh, let's just pick option 3 again. I don't know how to properly express this, but every single room in this map is weirder than the last. Let me just summarize. The final room is a cinnamon bun shop for some reason. I got a fence gate, and I'm told I have to look for something under the floor. So in other words, I have to mine every block of the floor to find the exit to the whole map. And the only thing under the floor was one obsidian block. So I spent five minutes of my life and mined it. And there was another one. I mined that one. There was another one. Oh no. This map is evil! Why would you put this in your escape room? I thought I was finally done. It's not even a puzzle, it's just mean. Eventually I made it to the bottom of the pit, but now I have to mine obsidian blocks horizontally. Luckily, I figured out a trick with the piston and the button from the first room, so I could get into crawl mode and only have to mine half the blocks. But it gets worse. After hours of mining, I started seeing pockets of water and lava. This was literally designed to be torture. Luckily, I was able to block off the fluids with shulkers and the alms banners from the cult room. This is why you conserve resources, kids. Soon I made it to the final stretch, a 100 block long tunnel of obsidian on top of cobwebs, on soul sand, on ice, and a command block to give you slowness just to make the experience as tedious as pop- Wait a minute. Soul sand on ice? There's no way you made this mistake. <laughs> You idiot! I can just mine under the cobwebs! Even better, I can still get into crawl mode with a fence gate, and now I just have to mine the ice and block off the water with the alms banners. I guess you could say the solution was, uh, alms? Anyway, that's the longest escape room I've ever played. 3 out of 10. Hopefully the next map doesn't have as much mining. Oh, uh, I'm gonna have to mine all this ice, aren't I? Okay, this might not be so bad. It looks like there's just bedrock behind it. In the meantime, the only other things in this room are a lever, a full cauldron, and a bed. But if there's a bed, in theory, I can just reset my spawn, build a staircase, and die of fall damage to respawn outside. Nope, they set my spawn point in the cell. Well, since there's nothing left to do, I guess we'll have to start mining and hope we find something. So that's what I did. I dug through the snow until I found a chest boat. Inside was a bucket and a snow block, but those weren't what struck me as useful. It was the boat. With both a boat and a bed, I should be able to perform the squill glitch. This is that glitch where you put a boat in the way of your respawn point, so the game has to keep looking higher and higher for an unobstructed spot to respawn you. And I'm guessing that's where the next room is gonna be. So to test my theory, I set up the glitch and started obstructing all the other potential spawn points around it. But then, as I was breaking the ice, I noticed a block of stone. Oh no, maybe there is something hidden behind the walls. Well, I mined to check, and what I found could not have been better. Nothing. Literally. It turns out the reason there was stone is because the map is built underground, and uh, to put it lightly, one of the bedrock walls is missing. Maybe the map creator accidentally deleted it? Don't ask me how or why, but honestly I'm sick of these tedious escapes, so I'm just gonna rebuild the squilly setup a few blocks deep into the wall, so when I die, I respawn on the surface and skip the entire escape room. 10 out of 10, next map. Okay, so there's a light gray stained glass pane in a hopper. Good luck. Wait, what did I just say about tedious maps? Finding a single glass pane in all these hoppers would take forever, and I'm in adventure mode? What is this? Oh no. 
I just checked who the map creator was. Do you remember the first room of my 150 player event when one player completed the entire parkour and then failed at the very last jump? That person made this escape room to get revenge and every room is designed to torture me. Why do you guys all just want me to suffer? Fine, you wanna play like that? I'll play your game. Throughout the map, I had to find hoppers, endure head hitters, five block jumps, MLGs, and eventually a triple Neo, the same jump the map creator failed. But there's just one problem. I did one test jump just to see how hard it was going to be, and after I failed, I got back up, and without even adjusting myself, I made the Neo second try. Is that it? That's your pathetic attempt to torture me? That was easy! Oh, oh, there's more. Oh, time for a quiz. Wrong answer equals death. That doesn't sound too bad. Who created this map? Uh, why not 690? 9 plus 10, not 21. Like charges, repel. Oh, this is easy. Angles in a dodecahedron sum to how many degrees? Well, since you asked. A normal dodecahedron has 12 pentagonal faces with 5 angles each summing to 60 angles total. We can figure out the angles of a pentagon by cutting them into 5 triangles each and realizing each center angle will be 1 5th of 360, making them 72 degrees each. Every triangle's angle is summed to 180 degrees, meaning the outer two will be the difference between 180 and 72. That's 108 degrees per angle times 60 is 6,480. <sighs> that was all one breath. Okay, final question. What are one-syllable words called? Monosyllabic or monosyllabic? Well, actually, it's monosyllabic with two L's, but I'll assume this is what you meant. What? Wait, wait, I googled it. I was right. The quiz is wrong. How do you have the audacity to put a quiz in an escape room and not even have the right answers? Okay, now we're in the real final room. Let's get this over with. It's a giant maze where I have to find all the letters of a password and put it on paper. Lucky for me, I have the power of F5. So using F5 gives me... Ah, uh, you get it. Well, after about 10 minutes of searching, I found all four letters and figured out the password was rock. What, what's wrong? I know I had the right password. Is it broken? What? Oh, I missed one letter. The password isn't rock. It's rocks. I hate this map. Zero out of ten. All right, so the next map has uh, rules, and I'm not really a big fan when it comes to rules in escape rooms, but let's see. No breaking netherite blocks, no breaking deep slate brick stairs, no breaking signs, and throw away items when told. Hang on. That's better. Now, despite the existence of rules, this first puzzle was actually pretty good. I found a chest with an enchanting table, and there was a crafting table below this water. So I only have three blocks, but I need to get up to an opening that's five blocks up. Now, it didn't take long for me to realize that to some extent, you can actually use the water itself as a block, because you can just barely swim onto an enchanting table. And after that, parkouring onto the chest and crafting table get me to the next room. And the next room is also pretty neat. I only have an oak slab and a piston, and I need to get to this crawl space down here, but there's only one power source in the room, a redstone block all the way up here. It seems impossible, but if if you place the slab on the bottom half of a block and place the piston one block away from the redstone, it just barely bud powers the piston and solves the room. By the third room, I realized the point of the don't break deep slate stairs rule. Don't worry, I'll be very happy not having to mine anything excessive again. By the looks of it, the exit to this room is that tiny hole all the way over there in the ceiling above this giant pit of void. So I checked F5 for more information and found one chest. We're working with a lava bucket and a redstone torch to get all the way over there. I'll admit this one took me a while, but I'll give you a hint. I can't do it with the items in this room alone. If you remember, there's a source of water in the very first room and now I have a bucket. Conveniently, my remaining three items are just enough to build a setup so I can get back through the crawl tunnel. So I made it all the way back to room one, picked up the water as well as everything else in that room and crawled back through the tunnel. And suddenly I realized why the water might not be so useful. Yeah, even when I try crouching, every time I right click the stairs it always waterlogs, so I can't really place the water in this room. Well, that's not completely true, is it? The only reason I can't place water is because I'm clicking on stairs, but I can just not. <laughs> yeah, this works. Okay, I just have to keep breaking and placing this piston over and over, and I think I can pretty much climb all the way to the other side. As it turns out, this isn't actually the way you're supposed to solve this part, but if you think you might know the real intended solution, let me know in the comments. One unnecessarily long tunnel later, and I arrive at a sign that says, throw away your water bucket here. There's that give away your items rule coming into play. Now, on the one hand, I could just ignore the sign and move on, right? But on the other hand, there's a sliding block gate similar to the one from the hopper prison blocking my way. I can't mine through it, and it won't open unless I give up the water. It seems like I have no choice, if it weren't for the fact that this kind of gate has been debunked. Yes, I have been debunked. A couple months ago, this guy named Plighting explained how the only reason you can't break moving blocks is because every time it slides, you start mining the block behind it, and so of course your mining process just keeps resetting over and over. Simply put, all you have to do to get around this is find an angle where you wouldn't be mining another block behind it, and it just won't reset. And boom! With that simple fact, you can break through almost any moving door, and I get to move on without giving up my water bucket. Now, the final room piqued my interest. There was a nether portal, as well as an empty hopper and a crafting table in the wall. Down this hallway, was a sign that said, throw away your water bucket here. Wait, what? Did it know? Did it know I was gonna smuggle it? Okay, well, <clears throat> anyway, all that's left to look at is this huge chute upwards at the very end of the hallway with another moving stone door. It looked like it was there to stop me from placing the water so I can't just swim up it, but uh... 
Yeah, let's just ignore that. I just want to see what's in the nether first. I real quickly walked through the portal and the first thing I saw was six item frames with five oak planks and a water bucket. Oh, there's a second water bucket. That makes a lot more sense. The only other thing in this room was this lava in the wall, but now let's be honest. I've already figured out how to escape the final room using water. I'm just too nice to actually do it. And I realized what the intended solution was. They want you to build a cobble generator and then craft a wooden pickaxe to get all the stone. But I know of a third way to escape and it's even faster and cooler than the last two. It has to do with a flaw with nether portals that I learned from an actual speedrunner. The first thing you need to know is that a player takes exactly four seconds from entering a portal to go through it. But if you place water in the portal after exactly four seconds has passed, you can break the portal on the exact same tick you go through it. Now, if that sounds really hard to do, I'll let you know I've had a lot of practice with this glitch from speedrunning escape rooms, and it's actually made a lot easier with a 120 beat metronome to help you keep the timing. The empty bucket indicates that it works, and with the overworld portal broken, when I walk back through, it'll generate a fresh new portal outside the escape room entirely. That was a pretty good map, and a good example of me knowing both the intended and unintended solutions. But this next room is kind of the opposite. I don't know if anything I did in this map was intended or not. So all the confusion starts in another build up to a ledge puzzle. We're given string, a button, a chest, two oak planks, an oak slab, an oak fence, a carpet, and there's a slab and an end portal up against the wall. I tried to see just how far up I could go and it went about as well as you'd expect. The cobble slab really isn't helping. I know there's nothing hidden in this room, so I either need to figure out like the perfect order of block placements to just barely make it, or I'd have to somehow use the same blocks multiple times. Now, that sounds impossible, and it mostly is. Technically, the reason you can't reuse blocks while nerd pulling up is because the item it drops spawns to the coordinates of the broken block, which is always much lower down than you can reach. But interestingly, a carpet is a unique block in that it acts like it's here when you're standing on it, but its actual coordinates are technically here. This means as long as you have something to put the carpets on, you can reuse the same carpet multiple times, which is perfect because I have string and a button. That little trick got me to the portal frame where I saw yet another piece of string, meaning I got to use the same carpet three three times to get to the exit. Room number two is not like the last. I couldn't immediately see any items, but there was a hole in the wall, two holes in the ceiling, one of which had a target block, and a block of real bedrock not clickbait. Behind it was a dropper with white stained glass, and behind that was a chest that was just barely out of reach. I was half tempted to place the glass block so I could reach the chest, but I probably need to use it somewhere else. Well, actually, I don't see any reason I can't just borrow the target block. If it ends up being important, I can just put it back in the hole later. So let's see what's in the chest. A bucket and three redstone. Yeah, I checked, and apparently that's every item I can get in here. So which hole am I supposed to go in? I know I don't have enough blocks to build into the ceiling, so the only option would be to get into crawl mode somehow. Wait! Okay, so remember that video where I got in crawl mode by clipping into an iron bar because the adjacent snow layers were slightly shorter? No? Well, either way, a target block is shorter than a fence, so the same principle necessarily applies. In theory, if I place the fence up against the wall and I place the target block adjacent to it, then as the fence's hitbox updates to touch it, it will clip through mine, allowing me to phase all the way through it and below it. That was crazy, but probably not intended. Well, the crawl tunnel sent me through a quick maze that ended in front of a stupidly huge lava pit. Like, massive lava pit. This time, the only blocks available in the room are a bit of dirt and 16 planks. And I was struggling to fathom how 30 blocks could get me across all of that. Even if I made slabs, I don't even have a way to tell how long that is. It could be up to 200 blocks. While I was brainstorming, I started to wonder if the roof was open or if it was just covered in barriers. It doesn't hurt to check. So I built up and it turns out, yeah, there is one layer of barriers at the top. But if that's true, then actually, forget the lava, I may be able to cheese this entire escape room with a trick that involves just two boats. Basically, all you have to do is place and enter a boat just below the roof. And when you get out of it, you'll be stuck, but your head is sticking out just enough that you can place and enter a second boat, completely exiting the entire prison. Which brings me to the main issue of this video. It's a basic problem with game design that most of the puzzles in this video seem to struggle with. And if I'm gonna debunk you guys, I might as well give some constructive criticism. Okay, imagine a river that flows from a high altitude eventually all the way down to the ocean through whatever path takes the least resistance. If you wanted the river to go in the direction of your choosing, you would need to make said direction be that least resistant path. It can't be told the right way to go, it just goes. A player in an escape room or any puzzle game is exactly the same way. Whether they think it's intentional or not, they'll get down to the metaphorical ocean via the first route they find. Which isn't necessarily the same for everyone, but the key issue is that other, less resistant solutions can very easily slip through the cracks in such a dynamic game. The whole point of my debunk videos was to show escape room YouTubers who somehow never found the most obvious path because they only knew the intended way. This video is the opposite. If you want to overcome this problem, you have two options. A, just make the intended path easier. The other paths will still exist, but almost no one will find them because they're more complicated. Or B, carefully play test and review and micromanage every detail to rigorously eliminate every single path except the one you want. This is easier said than done. In fact, it's impossible, but this final map is a perfect example of trying that. It's called the Devil's Puzzle Box, and it uses glitches I'd never even heard of. Now let me be clear, this map is actually designed in a way I prefer over regular escape rooms. It's a puzzle box, which means you're not supposed to roll 
play and pretend you're in a bedrock prison. In fact, you're encouraged to analyze everything in Spectator before you start because it's only about the puzzles. Admittedly, this kind of does make the F5 key become useless, but if you think about it, Spectator is really just the ultimate F5. Well, here's the first room. It looks very simple. It's about 50 blocks tall and completely sealed in bedrock. No exits. There are two enclosed layers of lava above it, and above the lava is the entrance to the next puzzle. So what items do I have to work with? 15 planks and 12 string. Now this seems impossible, but I think I know the glitch I need to get out of this room. It's the squilly glitch. But actually pulling it off won't be simple at all. I'd have to build the squilly setup at the top of the room. And if you thought my limited supply of blocks was bad now, I need to use up four planks just to make a crafting table, five planks to make a boat, three planks and all the string to make the bed, leaving me with only three planks to make slabs. So how are you supposed to build 50 blocks up with just nine blocks? Well, you multiply it by 5.5. Yep, that's the solution. See, after some contemplation, I realized there was a simple trick that could turn all of these blocks into five and a half blocks. And it all comes down to every escape room creator's favorite item, the boat. It isn't obvious right away, but once you see it happen, it's very obvious. You just have to build five blocks up, place the boat, and then recollect everything else. This just happens to be the furthest above you a boat can be before it's just out of clicking range. And you might be able to see the pattern from here. The crafting table and chest can be used on even multiples, and the slabs can be used on either even or odd multiples. Of course, as time progresses, you run out of blocks to do the nerd pull part with, but you can still do it on smaller increments. I'm realizing only now it would have made a lot more sense to craft the bed later so I could use the blocks now. Long story short though, I just barely made it to the top of the room and built this squilly setup so after I fall and die, I respawn above the two layers of lava. If you're not sure how that works, basically, <laughs> there, if you have any questions, just remember what I said in slow motion. The next objective is to build 15 blocks up with just 10 planks. That's enough to use slabs, right? Wrong. Because after making the crafting table, there's only enough for 12 slabs. That won't do. In fact, here's a list of everything I can make. Any ideas? Well, you can technically infinitely scale a wall with ladders or trap doors, but doing that 15 times in a row would require dream luck. Here's a hint. The map is on 1.18. Yeah, that hint didn't help me either, until I was briefed on the door glitch. Apparently in 1.18 Java, if you put a door in your offhand, at the exact same time you right click, you place the door and keep it too. Well, not really, it's a ghost block, but a ghost block you can stand on. So you can do this glitch again, and keep all the doors. And again, and again, as many times as you want, and build a staircase out of the top half of a door. I am walking up non-existent doors, how have I never heard of this glitch before? Well, that was exciting, and after I got to the top, I saw a crawl tunnel and quickly learned a more interesting application of the door glitch. You can get into ghost crawl mode. Now, since the door isn't really placed, you aren't really in crawl mode, yet by Minecraft logic, you still have the crawl perspective, and so I'm able able to open containers I couldn't have opened before. Ghost crawl mode is kind of like a weird version of Rage Hacks, but in vanilla Minecraft. Okay, hopefully the confusing part's all over. I'll use the anvil I got from the dropper to get into real crawl mode and then crawl into the final section. There are two paths in this room, a hallway in the ceiling blocked by barriers and a portal. The portal leads to a small closed off room with a barrier window with a bed on the other side, as well as a warped door, implying I should be able to get to that room somehow. There was basically nothing to do, so I jumped into Spectator to look for clues. First, I noticed there was actually another bed in the overworld surrounded by lava. There wasn't anything hidden in the lava, so I took note of the bed and flew down the hallway blocked by barriers. Each just had a block of ice and a boat at the very end, but there was one final room on the other side of the hallway with a second nether portal, and I'd be willing to bet it's linked with the first, and there's an easy way to tell. See where the second portal is relative for the first one. In this case, it's southeast of it. Then go to the nether and stand in the furthest southeast corner you can while still being in the portal. Just as I expected, I end up in the new room, which has nothing in it except for a shulker box containing 12 ender eyes and 12 portal frames. Ah, so we're going to the end. Wait, no. What good is the end? The end exit portal would just lead back to my last bed, not to world spawn. Maybe that's the point of the other beds? Well, I built the portal anyway just to see what was up, and of course the spawn island was completely surrounded by bedrock, giving me a good indication I'm not supposed to be here. But if I'm not supposed to go to the end, why do I have 12 portal frames? What do you do with portal frames? Ah, this is all so confusing. I actually seriously planned on giving up here, but then... I had a very good idea. I used Alt-Tab. See, using Alt-Tab gave me a whole new perspective, and I was able to see I had a Discord DM from the map creator himself, QCOM. He sent me a short video of someone building an end portal, but vertically. And when he lit it, the portal generated sideways. Why is this a big deal? End portals can destroy anything. You could punch a hole through a bedrock wall by generating a portal through it. Admittedly, I wouldn't be able to crawl through the hole it generates without teleporting to the end, but I could at least interact with stuff on the other side, such as say a button or a container or even better, a boat. There's only one room tall enough to even build this, and of course, it's right by the boat I saw. The pieces were starting to fall into place. I started building the portal sideways in the room I first got the items, and to my wonder, it actually tore through the wall. And after getting just the right angle, I was able to narrowly click the boat and slip past the portal to the 
other side. From here it was already obvious, I just had to break the ice to the right coordinates in order to phase back into the first room with the boat. The only mystery left is what to do with those beds. I know I have every item I can get in this map, and the boat has to be important. Well, after looking closely for long enough, I realized something huge I didn't realize before. The beds in the Nether and Overworlds are at the exact same coordinates and orientation. If I have the right idea now, the solution is a combination of three different glitches. First, if you ride anything through a portal, you won't go through it until you get off the mount. Second, if you click on a bed while you're in a boat, you'll fall asleep on the boat. And as you'd expect, if I did that right now, I'd fall asleep inside the portal, so I used the F3A glitch to see when the sun would set and right-click the bed. And the third and final glitch, I'd fall asleep while traveling through the nether, but Minecraft remembers all the data of the bed I slept in, so when I wake up, I'm standing on the other side of the bed. And that's it. I'm free. By the way, if you want to see a lot more glitches on puzzles like this, there's two things you can do. The first way is just to subscribe. That sounds like a joke, but I mean it. Just subscribe and I'll do the rest. The second way is to go to the first link in the description. This guy named Alexia made an entire website database of every single escape room you guys have submitted to me, and you can still submit more. In fact, Alexia has a map of his own with five escape rooms in one, which I played and loved. It's number 49 on the database, and it's closer to the puzzle box style I said I preferred, though I didn't put them in the video because I think they're much more fun to play and solve yourself rather than just be shown the solution, especially the water and piston puzzles. Not to mention, this video is already way too long. Also, very sorry to everyone whose maps didn't make it in the final cut. To be honest, as much as I made deprecating jokes for the sake of the video, I loved solving your puzzles. And it's not out of the question that I'll still play maps that get submitted here, either on stream or for another video. Seriously though, this video would have been a lot harder to record without the organization from the website. So thanks to Alexia, thanks to you. Sorry it's been three months, I'm getting better. Good night.